So what I have here is the OS Cube. Uh, and I don't know too much about it. I have an idea of roughly how it works. It looks like a two by two by two, although it is big. So by comparison, here's an actual two by two by two next to the OS Cube. The OS Cube is actually huge. How do we get this open? Oh, okay. Let's see, one thing I don't know is why it's called OS Cube, but I guess I'm not going to learn from this. Ah, but this has some kind of instructions in Chinese. Are these, I think these must be states that you need to try and get the cube into. So like that would be the simplest one, I guess, where, hmm, let's have a look. So what I understand about the cube is that when I turn it, these tiles will go up and down. So let's see how that happens. Oh, there we go. So as I turn this face, these two tiles here pop up. So, I mean, I think that's now achieved this state. I like the fact that if I, oh, wow. Oh, so that's interesting. So if I do the turn, let's call that an R, I get to this state. Oh, these are popped out. If I do R prime, I get back to where I was. But if I do R two, I get to another state. <laughs> oh. I was trying to work out what the pattern was there, but I really don't have a clue. So if I turn it once, these these ones all come out. If I turn it twice, it's the diagonals. Turn it three times, it's these two, which is a different two from these two. Okay, that's that face. What about this face? Okay. Oh, different behavior. So, different faces. This would be back to the same one. This is the other one. Oh, well, that feels the same. This one is the unique one. Is it always the same opposite? Uh, yeah. All right, so I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on really, but I'm going to have a go at scrambling it and then see if I can solve it. Actually, just before I scramble it, I'm just going to do an algorithm. So that was a T-perm. And interestingly, just as it would on a normal cube, it only affected the top layer. But what it's done to the top layer is different. So let's see if I just do the same algorithm again. Yeah, then we get back to the beginning. Okay. All right, I'm gonna scramble it. It feels really strange. It feels very large. It's quite a bit bigger even than a regular 3x3 Rubik's Cube. You can certainly see the size difference there, right? All right, so let's say this is scrambled. Well, what's my goal? Maybe do I aim to get one face flattened down again? Right, so every time I turn a face, it's the tiles on that face that are affected. So if I want to affect this face, I have to turn it. Uh, oh, there we go. So this one I can flatten, and that one. The reason I was able to do that was because I just sort of recognized, okay, well, this is one of the patterns that you often get. <laughs> from a flattened face. So this one I've never seen, right? So I know there is no sequence of turns that's just going to get that to being solved. Oh, that's interesting. In this case, it's always the same one that's popped up. That feels different. Again, this is one I've not seen. Um, OS 
it. There we go, that's flattened. Um, okay, so now we've got, every time you do a face, you're always doing the same thing to the opposite face. That's one thing. These two. So we've got one flat face, well, two therefore, and is it possible, ooh, that's interesting, so I can flatten this, but then it messes up this one, so what if I try and flatten this one, no. Ooh, now we're really close, so we've just got these ones now, any chance? these two with these two can make any difference. I mean it makes a difference over here but can it make a difference to what happens here? Maybe. So I've been assuming that the goal is to get it so that they're all flat but I noticed that in the deck of cards here with different states the one that's given the hardest is the one where they're all sticking out so I guess that's another solution state as well but actually if each of these cards is a solution there are lots of ways you can uh, lots of goals you can set yourself it's quite a nice idea actually rather than it just being a single solved state okay so after a bit more fiddling um, <laughs> I have managed to solve it as you can see. I don't really know exactly how I solved it. Um, I, I was sort of getting some principles that perhaps directed me towards the solution, but I couldn't comfortably say, right, I'll scramble it now and then solve it again. I will scramble it again and I will try and solve it again, but at the moment I don't know how exactly I solved it. But I did just want to explain a few things that I noted. So the most obvious thing is that when you make a turn, if you think of every turn as being sort of like a slice between two layers, then all these faces that are being sliced are unaffected. They move, you know, this bit here moves down towards here, um, but it's these opposite faces that are the ones that actually change state. So that is very important to take into account when making moves of any kind. Um, the other thing, okay, so the way that I got to the solved state, um, I ended up, no, not that one. I ended up finding myself in this state, and I got to this state from this state. And so this was one of the things that I was doing quite a lot. And this is this is something that feels very natural if you're used to solving a uh, regular two by two. If you, if you think of this as, say, a, a white sticker and it wants to match up with that white sticker, then it's a, a, an instinct to move like that. And this does work because of the first principle, because the only things that are actually gonna change are over here. These guys are not gonna change. They're gonna join together and form a bar, as I think of it. Um, and then the third thing, which I noticed, um, okay, so from here it's just one move to solve. But the third thing that I noticed, which is really important, is another thing that is an instinct for me on seeing this is to think, okay, I wanna match these up. I wanna get these two paired with these two. So I'm gonna do this turn. But whatever you do, no matter what happens to this layer, the same thing is gonna to happen to the layer on the bottom. So you can never get it so that you've got two here and two here. That just doesn't ever happen. It's not possible. So whatever turns I do, I'm going to end up with exactly the same over on the other side. So you can't do this kind of matching and then putting together um, to solve. So the principles for getting them solved are, I don't know, something different. So anyway, there it is. Um, I think it's a really, really nice puzzle. Um, it's an incredibly satisfying, clunky feeling as you make the turns. The magnets being strong helps, but also the fact that the tiles move in and out. I'd love to understand what the mechanism is behind those tiles because it really is very um, satisfying the way that they move. Um, solving it got a little frustrating, I must admit. I ended up 
finding that I would quite often get to a state that looked the same as this one, which seems like it's going to be one move away from solved, but actually wasn't. It was obviously on the wrong side. I, I think I'm right in saying that sides have different behaviours from each other, but again, I haven't quite figured that out. It's very difficult to form a sort of consistent view of what goes on um, with the puzzle. Any other thing I noticed, by the way, is when making a turn, you can sort of see the tiles start to move, and those are not always the tiles that end up moving. So I think if you can see, as I make a turn, watch what happens to this tile. It's sort of, it's like it wants to pop out, it pops out a little way, but then it goes back in again. I don't know what's happening there, whereas this tile, which actually does end up popped out, watch, it's, it's not moved at all yet. Oh yet, oh yet, oh yet, and it's only right at the very end that it pops out. So the mechanism is, is very intriguing. Um, anyway, there it is, the, uh, the OS uh, cube. Really, really nice and interesting puzzle. Very challenging, I'd say. Um, it may be that it turns out there's a really simple strategy, but at the moment I have no idea what that is, and I haven't seen anybody else who has one yet either. Um, okay, well thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.